Well, there's been some uh, breaking news. J.K. Rowling's revealed today that Dumbledore is gay. What do you think about that? Someone just told me this. I, can, can, you, can you explain this? In some, how do you mean she, she outed uh, Dumbledore? I think she's doing a talk in New York and she's said that he's gay and he's had a big unrequited love his whole life. That's his life's great tragedy. Well, strike me down. I, I have to admit, I didn't see it coming. Another great twist, if anything, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the books. But uh, it's, new, it's news to my ears, by any means. I haven't heard that yet, so... We bring in the studio this morning one of the gay rights activists, Mr... Should I call you Mr? Sure. Pepe Julian Onzima. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for... Good morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay. So JK Rowling has been making the rounds once again, which is something she does every once in a while. This time it was because socialist streamer Vosh called her out on Twitter and made a misogynistic comment about her. Now this comment was purely ironic and Vosh has multiple times stated that he doesn't condone the comment and that others shouldn't either, but at the end of the day it was still a misogynistic statement. So JK Rowling responded and there was a lot of media coverage, and honestly the online left had a good opportunity to call her out with so many eyes watching. I mean you can criticize both Vosh and JK Rowling at the same time, can't you? Or is that level of multitasking just not possible in our generation? Now obviously me being me, I'm way too late to talking about all of this, but essentially I've been wanting to make a video covering JK Rowling for a while now. I made one a while back, but it's a bit outdated and I think I can do it better this time. Now I want to make this video because I love Harry Potter. They're some of my favorite books and movies and they were a big part of my childhood, which is also why it feels like I've been kicked in the balls by JK Rowling because of her antics on Twitter, which I'll get to later on. Now, with Hogwarts Legacy coming later this year, which I'm super excited for, and this whole situation with Vosh, I thought now was the perfect time to finally make this video. However, I don't just want this to be a purely spiteful video criticizing JK Rowling. I don't agree with her opinions on a lot of issues, and I think her actions have harmful consequences. However, I also don't believe that there's any pure malice in her. I don't think she's evil. There's always nuance when it comes to humans. So yeah, I'll try my best to provide fair criticisms and not let my own personal feelings get in the way of my arguments too much but also make sure to call out any toxic behavior she may have shown. This is the problematic case of JK Rowling. Before we get into the video, I just want to thank my lovely Patreons, including our turf captain, Ben Joseph. If you want to join this amazing little army we've got going on, then the link to my Patreon is down in the description. Anyways, let's get into the video. Now, before we get into the critique of JK Rowling, I wanted to first highlight some of the good things she's done, because she's not the devil reincarnate. She obviously has had some positive influence throughout her life, so let's first get some of that out of the way and start off this video on a positive note. First of all, she has raised a lot of money for charity. Now, obviously, she has hundreds of millions of pounds to her name. However, she still has given large sums to charity. The sources that I've seen estimated around $160 million, which apparently took away her billionaire status. And I don't care if she's a billionaire, $160 million is still an incredible amount, and has likely helped a ton of people around the world. She has of course also written the Harry Potter books, which regardless of what she did with them afterwards, or some of the questionable aspects of them, such as the token characters, the Jewish stereotypes, and the low-key slavery apologia, it did impact the childhoods and lives in general of a lot of people, in a positive way. A lot of us grew up with these books and these movies, and still to this day have very fond memories of them. I've personally learned some good lessons from this story, and that won't change just because JK Rowling's bigoted antics in recent years. She has also in the past spoken for the rights of minorities, and I do believe that at least at some point she really did care about women's rights. She probably still does, although her lack of inclusion for all women is of course a problem. And that's what we'll talk about now. So let's start off from the beginning with some of the less harmful stuff she has done, but also the thing that began to form the rift between her and Harry Potter fans. I guess you could call this her Harry Potter virtue signaling arc. Essentially, JK Rowling wrote Harry Potter without much diversity of races, cultures, and sexual preferences. Now this by itself is completely okay. It's not a sin, despite what some people may think. It's all right to write books that contain mainly white straight people, with a couple of token characters thrown in. Whatever, that's not a death sentence. And it's also all right to want to go back and change some of these things later on, to try and make your universe more inclusive. That's also completely fine. However, the problem that people have with JK Rowling in this situation is that she pretended that she wrote the books this way from the beginning. She pretended that Dumbledore being gay and Hermione being black was in the books or at least were ideas 
from the beginning. I think people just felt that it was very disingenuous. I think it's okay to say that Dumbledore was gay all along, despite not having mentioned or referred to it at all, because it's not important to the story. It's definitely important to his character, but it wasn't necessary to the story. The same with Hermione being black. Her skin color doesn't matter to the story. As long as she has bushy hair and is very clever, then it's Hermione. And it's alright to say that you support a black Hermione even if you mentioned her having a white face in the books. Because again, it doesn't matter. It's just the fact that she pretends that she wrote it this way all along. Now again, I don't think this is a sin worthy of being hated for, I just think that she dislikes admitting that she was wrong. So instead, she says that she was right all along, but just pretended to be wrong. I know it's confusing, but it's also important to her future antics. But anyways, it's far from the worst of her crimes, so I think we're now ready to discuss J.K. Rowling's opinions on transgender people. But just real quick, I'll be attempting to give a thorough evaluation of J.K. Rowling and why people have such a problem with her, but I don't like making super long videos. I'm not good at that. So naturally, I won't be able to cover everything. But if you're interested in truly understanding the arguments against J.K. Rowling from a transgender woman, then I recommend you watch this video by ContraPoints. It's well made, it's thorough, and it's very nuanced. What I really like about this video is that she's very understanding while still being critical. For example, she understands and accepts how having previously been sexually assaulted makes JK Rowling nervous, paranoid, and rightfully scarred. But she also criticizes JK Rowling for taking part in campaigning against transgender rights, and sometimes using her previous abuse to fuel that. I know it's a long video, but it's also a topic that needs to be explored in such detail. So listen to it when you're playing video games or whatever else you nerds spend your time doing. But I promise you, it's very good. I learned a lot from it. But anyways, where JK Rowling first started gaining attention for opinions on gender, sex, and trans people was when she tweeted this. Dress yourself however you like. Call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. Live your best life in peace and security but force women out of their jobs for saying that sex is real? Hashtag I stand with Maya, hashtag this is not a drill. Now you may think that this tweet seems harmless and possibly even acceptable. I mean, in essence, she's defending people's rights to be who they are and just doesn't think that people should be removed from their jobs for saying that sex isn't real. It seems like a reasonable enough statement. However, there is a lot to unpack. Let's first start by reading some of Maya Forstater's tweets, the person who is being defended. Maya, are you saying that trans women are not women? I'm a bit confused. Yes, I think that male people are not women. I don't think being a woman slash female is a matter of identity or womanly feelings. It is biology. People of either sex should not be constrained or discriminated against if they don't conform to traditional gender expectations. What I'm so surprised at is that smart people who I admire, who are absolutely pro-science in other areas, and champion human rights and women's rights, are tying themselves in knots to avoid saying the truth that men cannot change into women, because that might hurt men's feelings. There are a lot more tweets by Maya Forstater talking about transgender topics, and I'll be showing some of them on screen as I continue. But basically, Maya's tweets can be summed up as, Men are men, women are women, trans women prey on cis women, I am being silenced for speaking the truth. And suddenly, JK Rowling is not just defending a person who thinks that sex is real. She's defending someone who actively discredits the validity of transgender people and who accuses transgender women of being sexual predators. Suddenly, JK Rowling's tweets seem a little less innocent, but it still goes deeper than that. Her argument is that transgender people and those who support the rights of trans people are claiming that sex isn't real. Now, that's a complete straw man because the large majority of people who talk about gender topics agree and accept that sex is real. That has never been the argument, and it is very ignorant to defend Maya by saying that all she said was that sex is real. No transgender person believes that you can change the chromosome of a person yet. They agree that transgender women were most likely born with a penis and had a Y chromosome, and transgender men were most likely born with a vagina and two X chromosomes. The argument has never been to discredit sex and say that there's nothing that's biological, just that the biological aspects of sex aren't necessarily the most vital aspects in understanding and determining gender, because sex and gender aren't the same things. Also, when you really think about it, the first part of JK Rowling's tweet really comes off as belittling what it means to be transgender. It's not just about dressing up as a man or a woman or giving yourself a different name. It's who you are as a person. It's what you identify as. It's how you feel in your own body. It's not a choice, just like how being gay is not a choice either. It's who you are. Now that tweet from JK Rowling didn't go down very well, but she didn't just stop there. Next up, we're gonna look at these three tweets. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, 
but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to spread the truth. The idea that women like me who've been empathetic to trans people for decades feeling kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences, is nonsense. I respect every trans person's rights to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. Now here JK Rowling falls into the age-old trap of saying I know and love trans people, but there's always a but. That's the only true constant in humankind. Some people have penises, some have vaginas, some have neither, and some have both. But everyone has a but. But anyways, she says that she loves trans people, but then she goes on to misrepresent the intentions of trans people by claiming that they want to erase the concept of sex. That's just not what it means to be transgender or to fight for their rights. She also says, I'd march with you if you were discriminated against, which shows a complete lack of understanding of transgender people and what they go through. Trans people face a lot of stigma and discrimination, violence both sexual and physical. A lot of people have been refused medical attention by professionals due to their gender identity, and so on. Transgender people are discriminated against, and JK Rowling saying this shows a severe lack of awareness, especially because she's contributing to that harm. This language she uses is very problematic because it's misinformed and shaped by her past trauma and experiences, which by the way is understandable, but it doesn't justify using this kind of language. I don't think we should be afraid to label what JK Rowling is saying as a form of bigotry. I know people always shudder at the word bigot, but I also think people fail to realize the scope of the word. Bigotry isn't pure hatred towards other people. In a way, it's a very human thing. Bigotry often stems from a position of wanting to protect something deemed as sacred, be that the values of one's nation or culture, which is what happened with the Nazis. Jewish people who, according to the Nazis' twisted and incorrect view of the world, wanted to destroy their economy and destroy their culture. It's reactive from feeling threatened, not from feeling hateful. Now don't get me wrong, bigotry shows itself as pure hatred, but it boils down to very human processes. I mean, the worst and most pervasive kind of bigotry nowadays isn't the old-fashioned people who outright say that gay people are the spawn of the devil. It's politically motivated intellectuals who have concerns. I've pretty much been paraphrasing this whole section from ContraPoints, but it was just too good. Essentially, they're never attacking something. They're always defending something. They're defending women, defending tradition, defending God, defending children and whatever else they think they're defending. That's what JK Rowling is doing. From her perspective, she's trying to defend women and their struggles and their stories from male predators, but instead, it comes off as misinformed, harmful, and bigoted towards trans people. There's also this essay that she wrote that's been labeled as turf wars by people online. And yes, the bad kind of turfs. Not the cool kind, like us. They stand for turf exclusionary radical feminists. We stand for trans uniting radical feminists. We are not the same. That's not actually what my name means, but it works for this context. But to give you an idea of what this essay is, here's a passage. So I want trans women to be safe. At the same time, I do not want to make natal girls and women less safe. When you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman, and as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth. Now as she writes, women are afraid of being sexually assaulted in public bathrooms, and yes, that's absolutely valid. I think we should all be against that happening. However, I don't think taking away transgender people's rights to use their preferred bathroom will stop sexual predators from being sexual predators. I just think it's a bit disingenuous. But what's also harmful is the language she uses throughout this essay, such as here when she says that TERFs include trans men because they were born female. It just completely disregards the struggles that transgender people go through. They don't just have to deal with the struggles of being a man or a woman. Being transgender comes with a whole bunch of problems, stigma, and discrimination that requires attention. But anyways, you can go read this essay yourselves and see what you make of it. It's in the description. It's always good to make up your own mind and not just trust the word of all emotional lefties like me. Now, there are also a lot of smaller things that JK Rowling has done that have just further fueled this discourse between her and, as she calls them, trans activists. For example, she made a tweet endorsing a website that just so happens to sell incredibly transphobic merchandise such as fuck your pronouns, trans men are my sisters, sorry about your dick bro, don't call me sis, 
Now this might just be a wild and complete misconception. Perhaps she honestly didn't know about the merchandise. However, it just fits with the other things that she has said. So it's just weird that the pen name she uses when she writes her books is Robert Galbraith, which just so happens to be the name of a psychiatrist who performed conversion therapy to turn gay men into heterosexual men. Also in one of her novels, the murderer is a man who cross-dresses as a woman to lure in potential victims, which might not be an intentional dig at transgender people and rather just a common trope in media that is turning cross-dress into murderers, a trope that has previously led to a lot of stigma towards transgender people. However, it might also be intentional, and when we take everything we've talked about today into consideration, it's hard to believe that there isn't at least some connection. There are just a lot of small things that add up. My honest take is that JK Rowling is progressive for a person in like 2005. She's definitely against how things used to be way in the past, where women had no rights, black people had no rights, gay people were killed in the streets, but anything past basic human rights, she's like, hmm, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a bit too much for me. J.K. Rowling is a person that I really wish I could like. I wish she didn't have problematic viewpoints that along with her massive following threatens the rights and validity of transgender people. One of the main lessons from the Harry Potter books is that it's not the circumstances under which you were born that define you, it's about who you really are and what you choose to become. That's what really matters. This is a lesson that many transgender people have felt comforted by. Harry Potter in general has a massive LGBTQ plus fanbase. They love the world you created, but they don't feel like you love them. And although you say that you love trans people, you still misinterpret their arguments, their identities, you correlate trans people to sexual predators, you promote websites that sell anti-trans merchandise, and while you advocate for women, you also leave out a smaller group of women who desperately want your help. I honestly don't think that JK Rowling is an evil person. Like I said, I don't think there's malice in her. She's done a ton of good things and she has been hurt before. She has trauma and she has a hard time accepting transgender people because of what she had to go through when she was younger, both with her mentally abusive father and her abusive ex-partner. However, like ContraPoint stated perfectly, you're not less of a bigot just because your bigotry has a tragic backstory. Anyways, I've rambled on for long enough. I think I've said most of what I thought was important to get out of the way. Basically, this whole situation with JK Rowling just really upsets me, and hopefully I'll be able to build a case that didn't just paint her out to be an evil blood-sucking leech, but also as someone with problematic viewpoints who needs to be called out. Like I said, next video we'll discuss Hogwarts legacy and whether or not it's ethical, I guess, to play it, despite what JK Rowling has done and said. But anyways, leave your opinions on JK Rowling down below. As always, do your own research too, don't just get all your perspectives from me. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day, stay safe, and peace out.